Kaleskinen, and I come from Finnish uh, Forest Center, Metsäkeskus, uh, which uh, is uh, forestry administration in Finland. And, uh, <clears throat> and Finland is having an area of 78% is covered by forests. So uh, introducing forests in Finland, I, I usually say that the forest starts from the Central Park in Helsinki and it ends when the tundra begins in Lapland. So we have only one forest. And <clears throat> if you look in the summertime from the airplane, uh, out the, from the window, and you can see in Finland, you see forests and then you see some lakes. And then here and there, you might see some roads and some small cities. So we have more than half a million forest owners. So we have a small scale forestry for large scale industry. It's having uh, the <clears throat> contribution in global markets. And that's maybe briefly about the forestry in Finland. And then, yes, we have open access to all the forests. Doesn't matter who owns it, everyone has right to go any forests in Finland. And if you ask from me why Finland is uh, five times chosen as the happiest nation in the world. I think the reason is the forests. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, about the forest center, we do the advisory work, some uh, stakeholder communication. We uh, are giving incentives for family forest owners for sustainable forestry. And we also enforcing forest legislation in Finland for the all forest owners, also state-owned forests. And one thing we do, we do remote sensing-based forest inventory uh, for these family forests, which cover uh, something like 14 million hectares in Finland. 60% uh, of the forests are owned by family forest owners in Finland. <clears throat> and I'm afraid I might maybe don't have a pointer here. Uh, I live in Joensu, and that's, you can see from the map, in the very east. And for myself, I can say that I have done it opposite way. I moved from the South Finland, from the big city to a quite small city and in a quite remote place, especially at the moment when we have this kind of political situation, we can say that Joensuu and North Karelia is quite remote. Okay, then next slide. <clears throat> so, I was asked to uh, have a speech about the cooperation and in my introduction uh, to this target group, I was explaining that we have had a lot of discussions with our school colleagues in Sweden, in, in Baltic, uh, Lithuania, and so on. <clears throat> and also in, in South Europe, for example, in Spain, Galicia, Galicia Castilla, Ileon, and, and Catalonia, and some discussions with Romania and so on, and, and France, we have nice, uh, cooperation there also. Uh, but I don't have to go through any more about the issues we have been talking about because uh, <clears throat> the earlier speakers this morning and all the audience, you have all already told everything. Uh, all these stories told by Marta, Ivan and others that's a similar, just similar cases we have been discussing with our colleagues in Finland and in Spain and, and so on. So this slide actually is quite done already during the morning. Uh, just some points here. 
I think what is uh, what we are finding uh, is yes, as as Martin nicely opened uh, this case about the regulation and and it's against reasonable management. The cap policy didn't allow uh, cows in the forest, <clears throat> and so on. And then we are struggling with the need for the economic development. And what we find when we have cap policy and other EU policies and these rural areas which are having these uh, drivers which are global like urbanization, so I mean uh, double population in our side. So at the same time what happens that in in fact in our <clears throat> in our sites in the rural areas we are facing uh, the conflict between uh, preservation or conservation and development of the rural area. And I think by rational way, it's unnecessary conflict. And I understand that it's not uh, intended or aim of the commission or EU, of course not. But it is what actually happens, uh, unfortunately. So, next slide. Yes. So now, what we have been uh, uh, talking about and what we are in uh, trying to manage in our network, uh, we have also here, uh, who it was, sorry, Ivan had a nice presentation about uh, how by the EU funded projects are uh, developing the network. Yes, we are doing the same. <clears throat> so, uh, and we have find that yes, we can do the projects, we can have networks and, <clears throat> no, sorry. <coughs> and, and we have, for example, a lot of discussions about governance and empowering, uh, empowering uh, areas and, and that's very good and it is very important but then the one thing uh, we haven't succeeded yet and i see it as one issue in here which uh, could be maybe helping all of us and could be maybe uh, supported by eu uh, so i see here i had only a couple of words technology versus the actual needs. Uh, and what I mean here, what is our experience is that we have issues, we have uh, common issues, we have um, ideas how to solve those, but uh, we have only uh, multiple access approach, we have governance, but what is not actually happening we uh, don't have resources for um, building or having uh, resources or technical tools for uh, improving our performance in, in the field, for, for improving our operations in the field, and for improving how we can uh, report what has been done and report about the success and maybe challenges also. So what I mean, <clears throat> As, um, as as Mr. Mark De Smith was uh, showing us uh, nice slides. And we have the EU Commission is supporting us by observing us and, and by observing rural areas and collecting data uh, and by monitoring what we are doing. Yes. And what is missing, I am trying to explain here in this in this uh, <clears throat> slide, and I don't know if you, you probably don't see my uh, my mouse so or pointer. So I try to explain that we are now uh, concentrating concentrating on the blue ones. There you see the monitoring. There's observing. And that's policy support. And it tells if the forestry strategy is successfully implemented or not. 
But what it doesn't do is it doesn't help in operational level work. So what we have here in my picture, the green point, is that what we need is a very good localized information, the database based on the remote sensing data and other databases, and for the brown uh, <clears throat> boxes, you see that we need the technology where we can plan and then uh, report the management, what has been done, or uh, the value chain from the forest to the country to make it traceable. And so, for example, that how much carbon is included in the furniture or houses and so on. <clears throat> but also to have a tool to um, coordinate all the work which is done in rural areas in the field. And that this is one thing we have noticed that it's quite difficult to uh, get on with this. So uh, it was mentioned, for example, Horizon here a couple of times. And for example, my experience about the Horizon is that the ideas and the projects which are, which are funded, they concentrate on the monitoring and supporting the policy and, and monitoring and observing. And when we try uh, to get our ideas to the projects that, <clears throat> yes, that's very fine, but we also need some technical tools for managing uh, localized information, across localized information in GIAs in a way that we can run operations and follow the success of the operations uh, in those GIA systems and make the data flow in the value chain or for the local government or the national government or to EU. And that's quite difficult to uh, actually get the idea, get through. And yes, <clears throat> so uh, what I mean is that all the empowerment and multi-actor approach, they are very important, but something, just, I don't know, something just is missing. That the actual, uh, the localist needs are not uh, taken seriously when you are uh, developing the European level observing technology. So, Next slide. Yeah, that was all from my part. <clears throat>